thrilled you are here. It is Saturday. I'm seeing you on YouTube and Facebook and the Instagrams and all that good stuff wherever you are tuning in. My name is Angela Petrilli. I am here with another episode of the Riff Rundown with the awesome folks at Fishman. So I'm gonna be teaching one of my favorite tunes today. This is called Trouble by Ray LaMontagne. He is one of my favorite singer-songwriters. He is an American treasure as far as I'm concerned. He is incredible, writes some really, really great, fantastic music. Those of you who aren't familiar with him, please go and, and, and check out Ray LaMontagne's music. One of my favorites. Okay, so we're gonna be going through one of his songs today off of his first album, also called Trouble. So the tune goes like this, and we're gonna, again, like we do with all these lessons, we're gonna break it down piece by piece. So here we go. going over today we're gonna to be going over the whole song so before we get started folks you know the drill let me know where you're tuning in from and let me know your favorite singer songwriter I already told you mine so go ahead and tell me what your who your favorite singer songwriter is and just as you guys know too with these riff rundowns if you guys got questions too, this is a Q&A as well. So put the questions, be sure to type them in, and we're gonna make breaks for me to answer those questions for you guys. Again, join in on the fun. If you got an acoustic guitar, go and grab it and let's have some fun. So let's go ahead and get started. Now, the tunes, or, or the songs in this tune, or the songs in this tune, the chords in this tune are fairly simple here. We've got G, C, and D for the most part. And you're like, hey, wait a second, that's, that's Pretty easy beginner stuff. Yes, these are certain very easy chords that we learn when we first start playing guitar, yes. However, how we play these chords is perhaps a little bit different than you are used to, so we're gonna have to talk about that now. The G chord that starts off this whole song sounds and looks like this. Now, as you can tell, my first and second finger aren't doing anything. They're just floating, getting ready for their, their next job, so. This chord is played like this. You're gonna go ahead and get your third finger. You're gonna put that on the third fret of the E string. That's your G, that's your root. And then your pinky finger goes on the third fret of the small E string, another G note. So when we play that, it's still a G chord, but why? Can't you play a G chord like this? And can't you play a G chord like this? Yes, that is true. These are all G chords. What's happening here and why they all sound the same, but a little bit different, is because of the way that the notes that build up the G chord are stacked. So in this case, with the G chord that Ray chooses to play in the beginning of Trouble, you have your root here. This A string, we're blocking it out. This part of your finger here, that little fleshy part where I guess you would, you would do your fingerprint, right? That is going to block the sound of that A string. So we're not using that. Then what happens here, your D string is open, your G string is open, the B string is open, and then you have a G here. So what's happening is that we are fulfilling the one, three, and five, in this case for a G chord, the G, B, and D, that you need those three building blocks to create the G major chord. See how it sounds nice and open and really cool? Very different sounding-ish to the other versions of G. So that's why we're playing that G chord. That's why, that's why it looks funny, but it's still a G chord, all right? So now, since our first and second finger aren't doing anything, we're gonna give them a job now. We're gonna play this chord. This is a C over G. Why? This G here is in the bass. Okay, giving that C chord a little oomph. We're putting the five 
on top of that C chord. What does that mean? What do I mean by saying putting, on, putting the five on top of the C chord? Well, if we go back to our music theory and we think about, okay, the key of C, what's the fifth note? So you have C, D, E, F, G, your five. So we keep that G here as we play this little bit of the C chord here. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead, I'm gonna show you how to play it, and then we're gonna break that down together, playing those two chords simultaneously. It's a really good hand workout. So your first finger, what you're gonna do is you're gonna put that on the first fret of the B string, that's your C. That G string is going to remain open. Your second finger, place that on the second fret of the D string, that's your E. So that's your third with your C chord, okay? So we're fulfilling again. We have a five, three, one stack here. And then we have this G on the bottom and an open G string too. Just like that, okay? So now we're gonna go ahead and work on this back and forth, back and forth. I'm gonna do this slowly and then we'll build up the speed. like that. And notice with my right hand here, this is a big strumming song. We're not skimping on any of that energy. There's nice and big strumming here. So make sure that that right hand keeps moving. So that's that move. It's a super, super fun way to play that G chord and then a C over G chord too. So now we're going to go ahead to the D chord here. Easy enough. I think you guys know how to play the D chord. All right. Now what we're going to do here again to add a bit more color, as you guys have noticed in these lessons, I really like to add bits of color on top of chords when I can in songs just to lift them a little bit and to again to, to to uplift that melody. So here's what I like to do with this. I throw in a D suspended four. How do we play this? All you're gonna do, D chord, keep it in place, okay? Then we're gonna do pinky, third fret, E string. That note there is G. So what's happening is that we're replacing the F sharp in that D chord right here, F sharp on the second fret of the E string. We're going to replace it with G, so the suspended four. And if you have a good guess on what the four is in the key of D, it would be correct. It is G. So here we go. We're going to go ahead and do this. And now we are going to go ahead and apply this D and D sus four, then back to D to the rest of the form. So this is what it should sound like, the D, D sus four, back to D. Just like that, and again, notice, keeping that hand moving. Just like that. Simple enough, okay? Just like that. So, let's go ahead and do that whole form. The intro, here we go. Now, when we're switching to that D, and I'm sure some of you have noticed, we don't have, because of, the, because of this new grip that we have of the G chord, we don't have that pivot point of that third finger. Not yet. It shows up later in the song. But for right now, work on that switch. So you beginners and intermediates watching, work on that switch. And again, we're going to do this slowly, then we're going to get on to the verse. Okay, so here we go. Okay, 
Okay, so that's all that's happening there in that intro. Those three, if we want to do the sus four, four chords, okay, that are in that intro. So that's what's happening there. Really, really pretty song. Oh, I just love this song. Okay, so now we go ahead and get on to the verses here. Now, chords are exactly the same, G, C, and D. However, we're gonna stick to their proper, I guess maybe more familiar versions of them. So from that intro, to our verse, we're gonna go to this fuller version of that G chord, okay, with that added fifth here, that D on the third fret of the B string. And notice when we have that D chord, it's a little bit easier to shift. We have that pivot finger with the third finger on the third fret of the B string. Say that 10 times fast. <laughs> okay, so we've got to that G chord, all right? Intro to that to that G chord top of the verse. Here we go. Okay. Then to that G chord there. Cool. So now we're gonna do here. We go to a regular C chord. We know this. And then we go back to G. And those two chords are gonna go back and forth pretty often. So, those of you may think, okay, that's pretty easy, I got that. For my beginners watching, stick to that. Just stick to that regular G chord to C. Great, still sounds good, right? If, again, going back to the color and wanting to add a little bit more, Try this, when I play this song live, this is what I like to do. So, you've got your G chord. I do a suspended two, a C suspended two. It sounds scary. All it is, you're gonna lift up your second finger of that C chord, right? You got your regular C chord, looks like this. Lift up the second finger, okay? And now play this. Nice and open. Why is it called a sus2? Well, we have that open D string there. We're usually playing an E, but we're not. We're playing a D in there instead. So it's a really, really pretty sounding open chord. And when you go ahead and add that third or that E with that second finger and hammer on, it sounds really, really pretty and just adds a little bit more movement. If you find that, that just playing that C chord is maybe a little too stiff, then, then add that sus too. It's a really, really nice move. So I'm gonna go between that G to C sus two to C a few times so you guys can hear the movement. And I'll do it at varying speeds. a nice like country-ish like Americana vibe that it's beautiful so that's something I like to use those of you who are maybe a little more advanced and want to try it or beginners or intermediates if you want to try it too go for it okay so we've got G that third finger as your pivot back to C to G and D. All right, now again, you wanna add more color? Do that suspended four on that D chord. Like that, all right? I'm gonna do that nice and slow here. Follow along if you can, all right, here we go. From the top. Sus two. 
Exodus 4. to do myself again we're adding color here i chose this song on purpose i know that the chords are very very basic but there's lots of simple things you can do to add some movement if you like when you're playing this so what we would do here you have your regular d chord what i want you to do lift up that first finger right so that is your so first finger that's on the second fret of the g string lift it up that's what the chord sounds like if you just play it, it's cool. But it really elevates, right? And, and, and gives some really cool foundation to that D chord when you hammer on and then go back to that A. So you're playing that open G string and then hammering on to the A. I'll do that again. And again, this is a simple move. You're only moving one finger to add some really, really nice color to this. D chord. And then you go ahead and add that D string on top. It starts to sound really nice and full. Say you were in drop D and did that, it's gonna sound even fuller and bassier and just awesome. So that's what's happening there, okay? So let's go ahead and start from the top of the verse and we're gonna go ahead and include that D chord there, okay? So here we go. Do it varying speeds. happening there. Again, fool around with those suspended twos and suspended four chords. They can add some really cool flavor. And that's a D suspended two. All you would do there is lift up your second finger, having that E string open, and then going ahead and hammering on with the second finger on the second fret of the E string, which is your F sharp, which is your third in the chord. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and stop there now. I'm gonna take some of your questions. I see a lot of them. Thank you so much for tuning in, everybody. My name is Angela Petrulli, and I'm here with the Riff Rundown, the awesome folks at Fishman. If you guys are enjoying these lessons, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channels. Fishman's got some really, really awesome stuff on there. Be sure to check out all the cool gear and all the cool folks that are on there. And you can follow me too on all the social medias. Angela Petrulli Music, I'm easy to find, you'll find me. All right, we've got some folks asking some questions about the tuning. Standard tuning here. We are in standard, standard tuning. Uh, someone is asking gauge picks. So I have this one here from my, my friends at Premier Guitar. I got one of these at NAMM. How many of you missed the NAMM show? I sure do. So I, I, I like this pick. Uh, I think it's a seven. What I usually use, and this is one of, these are one of my Petrilli picks. They're pink because those of you know who play guitar, how often we lose these and we find these in the laundry. Happens to me all the time. So I, I, I make sure they're neon or bright color so that I don't lose them and have to keep buying them. Um, 0.88 is what I like, Tortex. They don't slip out of my hands as often. So that's what I like to use. They're tough enough, but not too heavy, particularly for a song like this. I know with me, and I'm just speaking from, from my opinion as a player, I don't want to use a pick that's too terribly heavy with a song that needs to be strummed like this. For me, I find it a bit cumbersome if I've got this huge 
piece of like plastic or something in my hands. I want my hands to be nice and free flowing, which leads me to this next point. Those of you watching me strum notice how I'm keeping the hand fairly open. I'm not doing a closed fist for just for my playing. I find it slows me down. I know a lot of folks do that. And I think it's great. For me, I like to keep my hand a bit more open, let the air pass through in between the fingers. And I don't wiggle my wrist too much when I play. Like I don't, I don't do that. It, it, for me, I like to have really, really broad strokes when I'm playing. So if you notice, a lot of that power is coming from my upper arm here when I'm playing. And I'm having that elbow do the work, right? And move that arm. And I'm allowing it to move naturally. I know a lot of my beginner students, a lot of them think, okay, we only have to strum in a straight line right on top of the sound hole. That technically isn't true. If you notice when I'm strumming, and you can see by the marks underneath my pick guard, that I strum with a little bit of an angle here. Notice how I'm allowing the arm to move and sway in this way. See what I mean? How it sways like a windshield wiper. That's what I tell my students. I see a few of you on here, you guys know what I mean. <laughs> so like a windshield wiper, that movement. Like that. That's why I have these marks here is because of the way that I, I strum. So you can't see these up top, but there's some scratches like really starting to go through. Let's see if that light will kind of show it. Oh, a little bit. Oh, there we go. You can kind of see it right here, right there, where those scratches begin to happen. So don't feel like you have to just strum straight. Allow the arm to really relax when you're strumming and allow it to move naturally. And I know with a lot of folks that up strums may feel a bit unnatural. Here's something that could help you with that. We want I would say this, so, so the pick, obviously, it's, it's got a, a pointy end, right? Keep that pointy end pointed towards your stomach. So we don't wanna do this. See how the pick is pointed down on that up strum and then pointed up on a down strum? You can get a little too much friction in between those strings. It can tend to sound a bit harsh. And notice how we get a bit of wrist roll here too. And it can feel like you have a lot of drag. Again, as I mentioned in these lessons, the pick is the cheapest amplifier you can ever buy. So, so allow it to do a lot of the work for you. Don't feel like you need to be super, super forceful in, in, in picking. See how that sounds a bit harsh? You're hearing those peaks and valleys, those spaces in between the strings. But if you allow the pick to just do the work, having that elbow and upper arm guide, letting the arm move and relax naturally. And those broader strokes allow for more of the sustain of the instrument right? To really ring through. If you do shorter strokes, hear the difference in the sustain. I'll A, B this again. So we've got shorter strokes and then broader ones. See how it breathes a little bit better. So I'm speaking for myself. Uh, I, I, I like strokes that are a little bit broader on the guitar. Because again, we buy an acoustic guitar because they sound awesome acoustic. Let them breathe and let them ring. That's what these things are built for. So I know that was a bit of an aside on, on, on picks, but I, it's an important point to mention that I, I, wanted to, I wanted to talk about because I get a lot of questions with that in my, in my lessons. So. So yeah, I hope that I hope that answered your question. Okay, folks are yeah. Some of you folks don't know who Ray LaMontagne is. Go and go go go. Listen to all his stuff. He's great. He's great. All right. So let's see here. Strumming with the pick is kind of hard for me. I've played with my fingers for so long. I'm just getting the angles right. 
strumming is way harder for me than single note picking. I, I, I know, playing with your thumb is a little bit, and playing with your fingers does tend to be a little bit easier. You don't have to buy anything. You're not gonna lose anything, right? We're not gonna, we're not gonna lose our fingers in the laundry or in the, the black hole where all of our guitar picks happen to end up in the house. I know I have one of those in my house too. I'm sure you other guitar players out there, same thing. I would say this, those of you beginners with a pick, try a thinner gauge pick. So something that can bend, right? You don't want to get a pick that's too heavy. Get one, you know, just nothing too small, something that can fit, that, that can hold, that you can hold with your thumb and your first finger and see if that helps. Okay, so great questions as far as the, as far as the picks. Don't, don't worry, you will get used to it. Try thinner picks and then once you find that, okay, maybe they're too thin, then, then work your way up. But great question. Folks, love all the questions. This is great. Um, again, those of you just tuning in, let me know where you're tuning in from and your favorite singer songwriter. All right, so let's go ahead and go on to the chorus here. So chords in the chorus are gonna be C, we've got G, and we have F, A minor, and D. And we're gonna break down all of these chords, okay? <laughs> So we've got our regular G chord again, first finger on the second fret of the A string, second finger, third fret E, third finger, third fret B, and your pinky finger on the third fret of the G string. Okay, so we're gonna do that. And then we've got a C chord, and then an F chord. Back to C. So, I choose to play the bar chord version. Could you do this? And do this grip with the first finger going across the first fret of the B string and E string. Absolutely, you totally could. However, I want you guys to hear the difference. I'm gonna do one version with bar chord and I'm gonna do one version with this. And I'll explain why I play the one that I do. So here we go from the top. So from, well, let's say from, from, the, from the end of the verse, let's do that. So let's see. Personally, I like to play the bar chord version here. It has a bit more heft, it's a bit more low end Y. We're, we're engaging this F here on the first fret of the E string. And we're playing that one, three, five of F. So the F, A, and C in a little bit of a deeper spot. Okay, so that's what, that's what I like to do when I am playing this song. So here's how I go about it. G. Again, keeping that right hand moving, getting that power from the elbow and the upper arm. Nice, light right hand. Choosing to do that C sus too, if you'd like. To our F. Now, for my beginners, my intermediates, my folks scared of bar chords, don't be scared. They're so incredibly helpful and in tunes like this. I think they really, really make the song. So, C chord, how do we switch to F in a, as pleasant of a way as possible, right? Because I know this F chord can be kind of tough. Here's my trick that I tell my students. This first finger here, right, where you're playing your C on the, on the first fret of the B string, that is going to grow into that bar that goes across all six strings. Okay, so I'm gonna show you the move real quick. Have that be the first move and you switch. Okay, first finger makes that bar. Then go ahead and put that second finger, second fret G string, that's your A. Third finger, third fret A string, that's your C, your five. And then your pinky finger is playing the F on the third fret of the D string. So I'm gonna do that switch, C. First finger, 
goes across. Bring the second finger down, one fret, two, the second fret of that G string, okay? Third finger moves, or third finger stays. Third finger stays right where it is. Pretty cool, right? Third finger stays the third fret of the A string, pinky finger goes down, third fret, D string. Again. So see if that helps. If this is still too difficult, this is also a good, easy switch as well. Notice we've got the C and we can roll into that version of F there. So I'll do, I'll talk about that version real quick. We've got C major here. Okay, what we can do now, your first finger is on that C, first fret B string, make it flat. So now that first finger is going across not only the B string first fret, but also the first fret of the E string there. So that F and that C are right there, engaged, okay? And we wanna press there. Then we've got our second finger, that goes on the second fret of the G string or A, and then third finger goes, reaches up, and presses on that third fret D string F. That's your root. So with this one, you just need to be careful. If you do choose to play this version, we don't want to play all the strings because then it sounds like a mess. We don't want that. Too muddy. We don't have an E in the F chord, right? And, and we have an A, but we don't want to do that A in the bass. We don't necessarily want that third on the top, okay? So, let's try this now. To C, roll to that F. And also keep in mind here, I see this a lot in my beginner students where this thumb Whenever we do these kind of chords, the thumb is all the way up here. Here's the thing, when you're first learning these, I encourage you to do this. Place that thumb right where the, the neck is starting to bend, because it's like it's a C shape, the neck, for the most part. On, on, on most guitars, sometimes you have like fancy shapes, but when you feel it start to curve, that top of that curve, I want you to put your thumb there. So it's towards the middle of the neck. So see how you can't see my thumb right now because it's being placed in the middle of the neck. If I'm up here, see how the, if I'm going towards the upper part of the neck, you can start to see that thumb creep up. I don't want it there if you're gonna be doing this grip. It's gonna be a little hard. It's gonna feel tense on the inner wrist. We don't want that. Just by moving that thumb ever so slightly to the middle of the neck, you're gonna allow yourself a better grip. This also goes too for this bar chord. This works for both. Keeping that thumb in the middle. Okay, so what I want you to think about, I want you to imagine that the guitar neck is clear and that the thumb, or the, the thumbprint, this is your first finger, this is not your thumb. <laughs> Where your fingerprint is on your first finger, okay? I want it to, like, pretend it's staring at the, 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 the thumbprint of your thumb. So they're looking at each other like this and that's where you want them. That's how you're gonna get a nice firm grip. Okay, and again, we want a nice clear sound. So I, I know for my beginners, this is probably a tough chord, but don't worry, you'll get there. Keep practicing. The more you do it, the better it sounds. I promise. Okay, so there we go. So we're gonna go ahead and do this chorus one more time. We're gonna see an A minor in here as well, so keep an eye out for that, so. Here we go, top of the chorus. First of all, I love an A minor chord. Like, how great is A minor? All right, so how we make this chord change seamless, clean, 
right? Because that's the important thing. We hate to hear buzzing when we're playing guitar. It's the worst. So let's eliminate some of that buzzing here. C chord. A minor. Notice that the first finger and the second finger are in common. Have those two fingers be your pivot points. See how that happened? Keep your first finger and second finger in position. Why? Why lift them up if you're gonna put them exactly in the same place they were for the previous chord? Right? Use them as your pivots. How you can practice this and get this to be seamless and easier to do is just to practice it slow. Like I say in all these lessons, you cannot play anything fast you can't play slow. So take your time, be kind to yourself, be gentle with yourself as you are learning this. All good things take a little hard work. So, so you are worthy of that hard work in sounding like a great guitar player. You're worthy of it. So take the time to sound awesome. So here's how we're gonna do this. C, slow. Take the time, it's worth it, I promise, I promise, I promise. All right, so we have that A minor there. And then we're gonna go to a D chord. Now what I like to do, I like to add that little bit, again, for more color and movement. What I'm doing there is a D sus two, or a D sus four pinky finger, thir third fret, E string, G note, regular old D chord, then lift up that middle finger, there's your D sus too. Just like that. It's a beautiful, beautiful little progression there. With minimal effort and minimal movement, you can get a lot of cool color out of this chord. All right. So there we go. I'm gonna go ahead and do the whole chorus here. I'm gonna do it slow, and then I'm gonna do it fast. I'm seeing questions. Keep asking these questions, and I'm gonna get to them right after this. So here we go. Top of the chorus. Let me do it slower. <laughs> It's a hard stop at the very, very end of that chorus. See how I just choked it out? Just like that. So how we do this move, again, nice open hand, okay? But loose like a, like a rooster or a chicken. Okay, I like my analogies, there we go. So. Back to the A minor. When I go to pause that D chord right here, this part of my hand. I'm going to strum the chord and then mute with this part of my hand right here. I'm gonna do it a few times slowly. This takes some practice. So that's why I mentioned at the beginning, keeping that pick pointed towards your stomach is going to help, the, help you do this. Because again, your hand's gonna be on one plane and then mute, okay? Let's try it. <laughs> From the top of the chorus. Mute. 
again, I'm gonna do the, the series of the A minors and we mute again. Stop it. No sound. Okay. No sustain. Cut the sound. So there you go. Then after this bit here, we go into the intro once again. So now what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna play it from the top slowly and then fast and then we're gonna get to the bridge and that's the tune folks. And then I'd like to give you some more inversions because that was something I noticed last week that a lot of you guys got a big kick out of the inversion. So we'll talk about a few of those too before the end of the lesson. Okay, here we go from the top. Nice job. I can just, I can, I can visualize you guys playing this. I can visualize you guys playing this. So again, it's a really, really fun one to, to have and, and, and to know. It's just a really, really great song. And these are chord voicings that we see in a ton of other songs too. I want, I want to mention that. So, uh, you know, me and Bobby McGee. We see it there too. So we see this chord voicing in a ton of songs. So it's a good one to know. It's a good voicing that, yeah, this is a G chord. And then your C over G. We see this a ton. So again, it's a good one to have, good one to have in the back pocket, folks. Again, my name is Angela Petrilli. Thank you so much for being here. This is the Riff Rundown. I'm doing my Fishman takeover with the awesome folks at Fishman. This has been so much fun. I believe this is my 13th or 
12th or 13th episode. It's been a blast teaching you guys, and it's been so cool. I see a lot of familiar names on here week after week, so thank you all so much for tuning in. If you guys are having fun and enjoying this, please be sure to follow all the socials for my pals at Fishman, and be sure to follow me on all the socials, too. I got a a lot of cool stuff coming up. And again, the folks at Fishman are doing a lot of great things. So I'm seeing a lot of questions about the guitar that I am using and the gear that I'm going through. So let's go ahead and talk about that for a second. This is my Martin 00017E in black smoke. I love this thing. I think I've had it since 2017, I think. I love this guitar. It's a cool one. I bring this all over the place. Uh, spruce top, mahogany back and sides. Really, really great guitar. It's super light. It's a really, really light guitar. It's got a really easy neck to play. I really like it. I particularly like the headstock with the really cool vintage tuners. It's awesome. It's neat. Love this guitar. Uh, also, too, I've got the Matrix VT Enhance pickups in here by Fishman. It's good stuff. Makes guitar sound good. I have the Fishman Matrix or the Fishman R Spectrum DI. That's what I'm going through here. The silver box is an acoustic imager. I love it. I don't leave the house without it for an acoustic gig. Really makes my guitar sound as it should, which is great for folks who like us who play a lot. So really, really great piece of equipment. I cannot, I cannot recommend it enough. It's a really, really great piece of equipment. So I've turned on a lot of friends and a lot of students to it. But yeah, check it out if you're looking for something cool for your acoustic. It's a great, great piece of equipment. I think it's incredibly necessary to have. It's awesome. And going through as far as amp wise, I've got the Fishman Performer working here, loud box. They really mean it when they say it. It's a loud box full of a lot of power. They're loud, they're great. They're lightweight, they sound good, they look cool all that good stuff. And then I am being mic'd up by an SM57, trusty SM57, and then out to all of you guys. So that's what I've got going here. I see that some folks are saying that they're late. Don't worry. This is gonna be up on YouTube. You can watch the whole thing, I promise. It's gonna be up on the whole thing. The whole thing will be up on YouTube. Again, thank you all so, so much for being here. We got some time left to go over this bridge. So here's what's happening in the bridge. We're gonna go to a C chord. We know it. And then you're going to go to a B minor. We're going to keep this as a bar chord here. Okay, so those of you who don't know how to play it, we'll do a quick tutorial here. You're going to bar on the second fret of the bottom five string, starting from the A all the way to the E string here. Now, your root is right here, second fret A string. That's your B. So that's our root for our chord. We're not going to root on the E string, because that's an F sharp. We want a B, so that's where B lives. Okay, so what we've got here, second finger, third fret, B string, so that's your D note there. Third finger is going to be placed on the fourth fret of the D string, that is going to be your F sharp, okay? Pinky finger goes on the fourth fret of the G string, and there is your B. Your one flat three five that makes up the B minor chord. Yes. So there we go. So there's your B minor. We've got C to B minor and then to A minor to regular G chord. We're going to repeat this C, B minor, A minor. To G. Let's do this a few times. Again, keeping that right hand moving nice and light. Don't overthink it. Not too much. Don't be too forceful. Let the pick and the upper arm do the work for you. Here we go again. C. B minor. A minor. G. Here they are without my commentary.
from this part, we go right back to that intro. And we're just doing that G and the C over G. pretty great. I just absolutely love this song. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play all three parts here and then we're going to have plenty of time for questions and different inversions that you can throw in here. So here we go from the top.
right there. So I hope you guys have fun with that. It's a really, really cool one, super fun to play. Again, the chords are basic, but you can do a lot of great stuff with it. So let's go ahead and talk about perhaps some really cool inversions that you can do along with these chords. Say you are playing with a group of people and you guys don't wanna all be playing in the same spot. So what you could do is G, you can play right here as a little triad, just like that. So what you would do, just like we played this F chord a moment ago, you can slide this up because F and G are a whole step away. So the F A C, yeah, F A C. You can bring up a whole step to be G, B, and D to make your G chord inversion there. So you can do that if you wanna make a triad. Just don't do this added G up here on the fifth fret of the D string. Take it away. So you can do that. Say you wanna play your C chord, no problem. Say you even wanna keep the same shape but move it forward on the guitar, you can absolutely do this too. Here's your G like this. And again, remember that thumb. We want it here, okay? So what we're gonna do, bring this up to the eighth fret of your first finger, just like that. So that's covering the C. You have G here on the eighth fret of the B string. Not that open D string, we don't want that. So we were gonna put this here and that's your E where the ninth fret of the G string there. So you have C, E, G, the three parts you need to make a C chord, bam, there you go. You wanna add an added C, no problem. Go ahead and put your third finger on the 10th fret of the D string, which is C. So you could. And then go ahead and play this D chord. We know that C and D are a whole step away, no problem. Bring the shape up, rooted on the 10th fret. And then you've got the 11th and 12th here. So that same shape, bring it up a whole step. So your D, F sharp, and A, you are also playing here. See how it's the same chord? Again, it's a different inversion. We're playing the same notes, just in different spots. So know how much closer this is to the body than this. So of course they're going to have a different texture, a different sound. These are good things. So again, we're not gonna have the really cool openness. We're just gonna have a different color. There's your suspended four. How do we do this D suspended four? Well, you can go ahead and place your pinky on the 12th fret of the G string. That's your four. Just like that. So this chord, first finger across the 10th fret of the E string, 10th fret B string, B is in boy. Third finger, go ahead and put that on the 11th fret of the G string. There is your F sharp. And then your third finger goes on the 12th fret of the D string. But this pinky here, we wanna make it a sus four. This is a D chord. We wanna make it a D sus four, no problem. Put the pinky right here, 12th fret G. Hear that? So I'm gonna do this whole progression, but with this grip and inversion. Here we go. But say like, that's too much moving. I don't wanna to go to the third fret and have to slide all the way up to the eighth fret. No problem. There's another G chord that you could do here. Let's do this. Regular D shape chord. Right? This can be used as an inversion too. Slide this up to the seventh and eighth fret. Two fingers, okay? Put your first finger on the seventh fret of the G string. This note right here is D. Your third finger, place that on the eighth fret of the B string. There's G, there's your one. So you got your five and your one. And then go ahead and put your second finger on the B, which is located on the seventh fret of the E string. There's another G chord. C 
see how they, we are using the same notes, we're just playing them in a different spot. So you could choose to do this. See how the movement is very easy to that C chord? Pretty neat stuff, right? So you can go ahead and do that on that intro. Again, this F shape chord can be used for really, really cool voicings, particularly as, you know, a secondary guitar player, lead player. This is a really good intro into inversions and playing chords up and down the neck because a C chord doesn't just live here or here or here. As long as you could find a C, E, G on the neck of a guitar, you could play a C chord anywhere you like. Okay, so keep that in mind when you're going ahead and thinking about inversions and playing with other folks and fill the space. We have all of these frets here to make beautiful, beautiful music. So feel free to, to explore and find those notes and all of that good stuff. So I'm gonna go ahead and take a few more questions from all of you guys before we go ahead and sign off today. But this has been an absolute blast. Those of you who are having a great time, be sure to follow Fishman on social, follow me on social. We got a lot of, lots of good stuff going on, lots of good stuff cooking. So really, really excited to have you. Um, uh, Matthew, thank you very much. Likes the sound of the Martin. I do too. It's a good guitar. It does the job. I love it. I love it. I love it. Thank you so much. Um, we've got DJ asking, what kind of strings are you rocking? I am using Daddario nickel bronze lights on this guitar. I actually just put new strings on about three days ago. I always give my new strings at least a day or two to get used to, uh, to get a little bit of that rawness out. Um, because sometimes they could sound a little too bright when you first put them on. So I like to give them, you know, a day or two to breathe before I go ahead and, and, and gig or record. And yeah, they, they, they sound really good. They sound really good. Absolutely love these strings. Probably my favorite new acoustic strings for sure. Uh, all right, Matthew is also asking about what are the pickups? Well, so I've got the Matrix Enhance in here and it sounds great. I mean, the you know, the thing with with Fishman is that they really make the guitar sound as it should. And that's a really important thing to me as someone who plays and records in sessions a ton. It's good to, to have products that really allow the instrument to, it allows the full integrity of the instrument to come through. That's really, really important to, to me as a player. That's an important thing. So yeah, that's what, that's what's going on. Uh, ooh, what have you got for us next time? I'm thinking it might be an electric tune. I haven't decided quite yet which one it will be. I might keep it, I might keep it acoustic. I don't know yet, but I know it's gonna be a fun one. I'm gonna make it a little more, uh, a little more advanced. I wanted, to, I wanted to show some love to a lot of the beginners and intermediates who are tuning in. And again, those of you who are perhaps a little bit more um, upon your journey as a musician, I hope you learned at least a couple cool new tricks from today's lesson to inspire you to 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 play and, and and find your voice so so yeah it's it's good stuff again just really really enjoy doing these lessons thank you all for the kind comments and stuff it is it is wonderful to know that you guys are enjoying these just as much as I am so I'm having a really really great time uh, again thank you all so much for being here enjoy the rest of your weekend I will be back same time same channel it's gonna be great I'll let you guys know what song I'm doing, but you're gonna have to wait a few days to find out. Be sure to follow me on my socials to get a heads up on what tunes I'll be playing on the Saturday Riff Rundown. Again, thank you all so much. Be safe, be kind, all of that good stuff. Play a lot of good music today and give us a follow if you enjoy the show. We'll see you next, next week, folks.